I'm ready. You are? <laughs> I am not. And but I have my subway distance. I have almost and my subway distance. I have my dance move robot. I'm not gonna move that. So how are you doing today? Okay. For uh, the next uh, of this episode, please try to not bang the table with your hand, move your mics while you're talking or all of this. And uh, I will also do the same. <laughs> I think our listener would be happy. Yeah, but I'm, 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 I'm Portuguese. I speak with my hands. I can't do anything about that. It's like, it's like say to an Italian to not whistle to a girl. Like it's, you know, it <laughs> like it's like, you know. I don't know. Say to a Quebec guy to not eat poutine. Yeah, no, like not over <laughs> Quebec guy not eat poutine. All right, we're high on coffee this morning, and uh, yeah. we're recording a bit later because for some reason they decided to do construction in my street. Uh, but we hope to have the a silent window. So okay. what's up? What man? are we? How what are, are we? Oh, pff, good, good. Uh, it's going fast. I'm honest with you. I'm quite tired. I finished my days with uh, no brain at all. I was thinking about something that we can discuss, but I don't know. Do, do you have a topic that you want to discuss? How are you? I don't, I'm... Not at all. I have absolutely no topic. And you? I. Pff, <laughs> I'm not sure. I wanted. I, there is a. There is a topic I wanted. To, oh yeah, I know. I was in the street earlier. And I want to discuss about bullshit and that people need to stop with bullshit. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a good. Uh, <laughs> no, no, like I'm gonna tell I'm gonna tell the story, right? It's um, I I, I was in the street going to um to a restaurant, and I saw a spa, organic and vegan. Okay. A spa. And I was like, what What is a spa, organic and vegan? <laughs> seriously. <laughs> no, seriously. What is a spa that is organic and vegan? There's no chemical in the water and they haven't, uh, they haven't armed any animal in the, when, they, when they put eucalyptus in the, in the chamber. <laughs> I have no clue. <laughs> I don't know if I want to discuss about that, but I'm just like, I think our world is going down. Oh, it's, it is. It's, Oh, That's we can sorry. discuss about that. How the world is collapsing in front of our eyes. In bullshit. Right now. In bullshit. <laughs> bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, I think I, th <laughs> I think the thing the, the, the worst thing is how strong or, or how deep it is collapsing and how intense the bullshit is around it. They're like trying to cover up what's really happening in that totally collapsing. Fi at least financial world, but when Ooh, you look at oh yeah, yeah, okay, I triggered you. I triggered you. I like I triggered like Shh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like oh yeah, financial and the government and and the guys at Davos. I know they're doing something, and right now there is a bunker, and they're all there. I know that. I read it, and we're all reptilians, controlled by reptilians. Sorry, and the aliens oh, are here also. No, you have a so. nice, uh, you have a nice opinion of me. That's cool. <laughs> we can discuss about that. <laughs> no, I know, I know you're against them. Um, I, I think you're a bit. I'm sure you're against capitalism. That's for sure. I think you're oh. against the current order of the world. Um, well, define capitalism, and I'll tell you if I'm uh, against or for. Capitalism, it's what has been happening in the last 100 years, which is the consumption um, at outrance, which I don't know, like overconsumption, uh, more that we can consume, uh, more that we can even afford, uh, credit. Um, what, is, what is capitalism? Uh, basically firing people for your, um, for your investors. Uh, do, do you want more <laughs> examples <laughs> of capitalism? <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I'm going to tell you, I am fucking and totally against the actual way of being a capitalist of like doing capitalism, if we can say that. Do I think there is conscious capitalism? I do. And I think that capitalism could have been, oh, 
Conscious no, sorry, I was, uh, I was doing two things at the same time. Conscious capitalism, explain that to me. I want to get it. What is conscious capitalism? Well, there's even a movement worldwide that is called conscious capitalism. Uh, I would say it is based on the, on the fundamental that a business should not have a single bottom line, which is profit, which is the only driver for the business. It should, they, they advocate for a triple bottom line, which is people, planet, profit. That's sustainability. Because, that's, not, that's not capitalism. Well, so, yes, I, I think, I think you, can, you, you can grow you, and, and grow in a sustainable way. Are you, are you talking about the, um, what is it called? The circle, the circle economy? The donut economics. No, there is a donut economics. Oh, hey, I, I, I didn't <laughs> imagine that by starting a podcast on, on, on authenticity, I will talk about circle economy, circular economy, <laughs> sorry, and about donut economics. Like I will never have guessed that, but I, that's, that's a first. Let's go. That's what is crazy good, with, crazy nice with, with our no show. Scripted, with no scripted and filtered, this is what it gets. Um, for some reason, we always have something to talk about together. <laughs> so, so that's the thing you see, like for me, like whether you call it circular economy, donuts economics is because it's a, it's a framework uh, that you can mm -hmm. use to, to, um, to assess cities and all that. For the people that don't know that, it's amazing. We will put the link. Um, I will not explain it because I'm not an economist. Um, but there is a bit of a contradiction for me between capitalism and circular economy or sustainability economy or whatever you call it. I don't know. For me, they don't work together. Hmm. Do, do you think that there is well, capital? You, you call that conscious capitalism? No, that's well. That's a different thing. Like I said, like the conscious capitalism you you asked me to explain was really that the 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 driver of a business should be to make sure that the people are presented or treated well or like are in the decision. The planet is respected through the the business practice and the business needs profit to grow, which is normal. Like I'm not against profit at all. I'm against pr profit for, uh, for any reason, N not for, I mean, I'm against profit with any means to, to do, like the, the Machiavel uh, way of doing like the end, uh, I don't know how to say Justify, it justify the means. That's, yeah, the end justifies the, me the means. So- I don't know if it's an expression in English, but it's- yeah, yeah, it is. It's totally. But that's, that's what's the problem. It's not that we want to grow as a society and, and use business practice to do it. It's because the businesses that are doing sustainable and, and conscious uh, practice or businesses that they build on these core concepts, they are such a tiny minority, tiny percentage and there's such what a are big you talking about? There is so uh, many companies that are doing sustainability. Come on, the no oil company way. are doing sustainability. <laughs> yeah. Put that on the website. What are you talking about? <laughs> the mining oh, yeah. companies. The mining companies are doing sustainability they're also. Yeah, they're so sustainable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's so I that's the I bullshit. Told you, I, I told you I wanted to discuss about bullshit. So this is why I find oh, yeah. conscious capitalism is is bullshit. Because okay. I can't believe, I can't believe that a company, okay, if you had two decisions in strategy, right? You're any business, any business, and you can take any, any decision that you're taking. You're, you have a choice in the strategy to, for the planet or for the business. Which one are you taking? Well, why would you have to take one of, the, uh, one of, because, of because each? That's you, the problem. Because, it, because it's saying like, because, because every decision you're taking is, is in regard of your business, right? You're not taking decision that is against your business. You can't do that. It's, it's, it's not business anymore. In the actual state of thing, yes. But no, 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 it's not. I think for me, it's like, that's the first step that we have to agree. You can't, I mean, I understand what you say, but this is why I'm saying that it's against capitalism. Because capitalism is basically enriching yourself. It's not about sustainability or anything like it's, it's, and this is the, this is the, 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 the run that we're having right now where businesses, even if you're firing a lot of people, you have the CEO and the investors that are making a lot of money, which is, which is insane when you think about it, because it, that's capitalism, that's the definition of capitalism. 
when you start have thinking about your people and everything, I don't think you can call that capitalism. I, I get I get your point, and that's that's maybe I'm not explaining myself well. That's exactly the problem. So basically, if you look at a chart, um, constitution chart of a company, okay. Mm -hmm. It's written black on white there that the main and only goal of a company is to enrich the, the shareholders. Yeah. And that's the only thing. So it's not on the like, website, though. No. It's, so, so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so the website if you just start, there, yeah. But if you just start there, you can ask yourself the question. Who is wrong? The people that build businesses and that follow these guidelines or the people that are making these guidelines, the government and everything. So that's the point. The conscious capitalism I was explaining to you is having at the core of the chart of the company to make sure that it's not a single purpose. It's, the, it's three, at least three purpose that consider people, planet and profit and all your decision for the business should be uh, aligned to go with these three. And you cannot take a decision that's going to misalign or, or mistreat one of, this, of these purpose. So I'm talking about a, a total uh, change in the fundamentals of what is a company. So would it- You know what? I agree with you. I changed my mind. It exists. Yeah. It exists. I know it exists. Today it exists, and in one country it exists in particular. Okay, let me guess. Mm. There is one country where that exists. It's probably like a Scandinavian country or nope. Switzerland. Nope. No? Okay, I'm, I'm not going to guess uh, longer. Because, <laughs> because, to, because to think like that, you have to think long term. And there is only yeah. one part of the world where they think really long term. Because we mm, believe in reincarnation it. and everything else. Which means yeah? No, not. Okay, they're not the only one, but you're okay. on the right part of the world. <laughs> like uh, in only one country. <laughs> well, if it's one and uh, you know it's probably a big one. Are you talking about China? Phew. Okay. More, more, <laughs> Tell me. more, in, the, more in the east. More in the east? Man, I don't there is, know. On, there is only one country in the east <laughs> of China. It's Japan. Ah, Japan always think long term. When you look at mm. most of the companies that are there, um, they have like they have like a strategy that goes until 2030, 2050, because it's a country that thinks long term. Okay, but it doesn't mean they are doing sustainable practice. Yes, because since they think like that, they all have a policy to think sustainability to 2030, 2050. You can look at it. Okay. I'm not yeah, saying well. I'm not saying they're doing I'm not saying they're doing everything right. Okay. I'm not I'm not saying that. I'm not it's not a fairy tale. But it's <laughs> but I know I know there they think long term because of everything of the rest i don't know about the other countries to be honest mm -hmm. in asia be, because i know that in asia they believe more in reincarnation that we do or it's more in their in their thing but i believe that there there is more stuff about being in the long run and being in the long term yeah and and, and you just hit a hit a point that's so important uh for sustainability you cannot have practice to just focus on the next quarter profit that will align with the, 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 the 50 year projection for the health of the planet and the communities. Like it just yeah. doesn't work at all. And that's the only fucking problem. And it's getting worse and worse also because people, their, the attention span and, the, and the, the focus and the short and the long-term planification get shorter and shorter and shorter with all the that way everything else that you have in your everyday life that just like kills your focus and your attention span and all and all uh, look, of this so look at startups what do you mean just look at startups the, your goal is to have the best valuation ever you yeah. have to be unicorn how do you think you reach a unicorn in five years five years man five years 
It has taken like some companies like 30 or 40 years to redress one. McDonald, I don't know how much you know they're worth now, but I mean, how long did it took McDonald to reach that point? Mm. You have Facebook that reached that point in not even 10 years. That's insane when you think insane. about it. And this is, where the the, same... this, is, this is where all the bullshit is coming from because the government also are responsible for that. You can't give a piece of land to someone or a, a water and then like, what was the, um, was it uh, Coca-Cola in, the, in Canada that were bottling water that was coming from the tap? You remember uh, that? Well, it's, it's maybe not Coca-Cola in Canada, but that's what they are doing right here, <laughs> right here in the town that I'm in, San Cristobal de las Casas, they are using the water and they are bottling Coca-Cola with it. And there's like even a, that's so, that's so silly, man. I, wanna, I don't wanna get into that, but basically here you can, uh, there's a, an indigenous community that is really big and that controls all the city here. And they are like just outside the city, like maybe uh, 10 kilometers. And, it, uh, and they have like maybe 50,000 uh, people, but they are literally the child I cannot say that, man, I don't know why it won't enter my mind. The children, the children are drinking Coca-Cola. Everyone is fucking drinking Coca-Cola. And because they are like, um, Coca they, they, they like have an arrangement with Coca-Cola and they pay, I think a bottle of Coca-Cola is, is like a third of the price of a bottle of water. So they just, and they just drink that. And then Coca-Cola have the, the supply. They, they have all the tap water. They bottle the water with it. And then all the people in San Cristobal have shitty water because Coca-Cola is, uh, is having all the good ones. It's so crazy. When it then the state, and then the state is going to tell you, we have to do something for climate change. Yeah. <laughs> you, have to, you have to recycle, man. It's your oh, fault. You didn't recycle. You didn't, you didn't we could, recycle. <laughs> we could do a no whole fault. season of episode on the bullshit of governments and, and, and companies around social issues. Like it's just- But this, so this is why I'm talking about bullshit and it's going down. This is why, this is why I'm talking about it. And this is also the problem. I was, I was having this discussion about another subject, but this is, this is also the problem of having too much knowledge. Because if you're someone that just leave, you know, and you're polarized by social media and everything, you believe everything that is said in the media. And so, yeah, it's your fault. You know, we didn't, we didn't pay good attention, blah, blah, blah. But if you're someone that is, you know, informed, I will not say smart, I will say informed, which is not mm -hmm. nothing to do with, uh, with the two, right? There is no link. Um, when you're someone that is informed, you have a problem basically with society. Oh, totally, totally. But the quickness to have everything, it's the first problem in everything that you do. You know, what I was talking the, the other time, you know, is the fact that I want avocados. I don't care what time of year. So obviously my avocado is not, not going to be sustainable. There is no way how they can be sustainable. Even if they are sustainable, they're going to take a plane and everything like to come and elevate, like just forget it. <laughs> it's like... It, it's just, for me, it's just awful because that, that, <laughs> that bullshit universe that we live in we can call that a, a bullshit universe because all the world is a, is just a big ball of bullshit that works. But even our and world, the, even our yeah, world. Yeah, but, but you I just mean, look I, at I mean, it. Personal, personal, I mean. Oh yeah, yeah, totally. But you just look at it. How in the world would these bad practice continue to go on if it was not because they were bullshitting us all along. There's no United way it would. US, US. And every, like everyone, all, all, everything that's happening right now, I'm not saying, like I'm not saying everything is wrong and the world is, is, is shit, no. No, you, told me, saying, you told me where, where, it where, where it will continue, the US. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. They, nobody, but, nobody cares from the moment you make money, nobody cares what you're doing, so. <laughs> And, and and it's just a, a pile of shit that's just becoming bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And you were you were saying uh, about the company that reached the billion faster and faster, but you're like 
you also got to think that it's because of the deflation of the of the the money like the money is worth less and less and less so getting to a billion is faster and faster and faster just for that reason also and why is the money getting less and less and less it's because they're printing fucking like crazy and the coronavirus thing just made the printing go fucking crazier biden just announced they will print three trillion dollar like what the fuck like the, they always the, did they, they always did that they always did that yeah but now it's exponential and i can tell but, you it's gonna crash the, the total economy because the total economy is linked to that and it was, and it was i'm started, gonna say it, something that i'm it, it was started by reagan so it's not it's not new it's not new no that i mean the, the well, I don't, I don't know if Reagan was before Nixon because I, I don't follow that. But I can tell you for sure that the real problem with the financial system started right when Nixon removed the, the, the money from of the gold standard. Oh, I That's, thought it was Reagan. No, no, same no, thing. Okay. Same thing. I thought it was Reagan. Well, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> pretty sure it's Nixon. Maybe I'm wrong also. I don't know. One of the two. <laughs> so, so yeah, all the problems started there. And, yeah. and I'm, really, I'm really looking up into uh, the crypto world, world right now and the, and the decentralized currencies and everything like the, the massive change that, that's happening right now at a small level, but that small level is growing so fast. And it's really interesting to see the next wave of disruption that is coming. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and it's really, really crazy to see how the government are trying so hard to to get control over that thing that is supposed to be uncontrollable in itself by definition, but they are press pressuring and pressuring and pressuring and trying to get a hold of that uh, disruptive thing because it's the it's the the biggest threat that the the actual financial system, the actual governments, and how everything works they have had to deal with. Question, because yeah. we're talking about bullshit. Do you believe in democracy? Uh, do I believe in democracy has... As because you're talking about government has, and all that, like they have a power yeah. because we elect them and all that. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to the fundamentals. Do you believe in the democracy that we have? Okay, that we have. No, I don't at all. Do I believe in the real definition of democracy that what it should oh, yeah. be? Sorry, yeah. I I I think I really think that the real democracy and and not the one you read in the books at all. It's not what is democracy. That's what they want you to think is democracy, so that they can actually do that same thing themselves and just corrupt everything. No, there's a guy I don't remember his name. He he he, he written. Um, I think he's a uh, oh man in in some Middle East country. The guy is already uh, at the forefront of. Uh, yeah, he's really battling for the democracy down there. And he made a book, which is, I think, the, the Little Green Book on democracy. And he explained really what's wrong with democracy right now and what is the true definition of democracy and why it doesn't work uh, as, as it is right now. So that's why I'm saying, do I believe in what we have right now? Totally not. It's, it's, it's a fake. It's, it's, it's a bullshit. It's, it's a facade. They're saying so why, why, it's a democracy, but it's not. So why do we talk about government then? Because for me, they have no power. So this is why I'm like talking about that. They have all the power. What the fuck, man? Where do they have all the power? They control everything. What do you mean they control everything? What do they control? Well, I mean, Apple, they control Apple could buy Apple could buy tomorrow, like at least like. Ah, you mean you mean the couple. sixty countries? Yeah, but that's the thing. Banks. You know, when you talk about decentralized crypto, crypto and all that, the people that are yeah. behind the government, supposedly, it's, it's the banks. Or, yeah, companies yeah, so like, or companies like BlackRock or things like that. To totally. That, that's, that's really true. And when I said government have the control. We're going to be I shut meant... down by way just by saying that. I, I yeah. said the name of a company. <laughs> I, I, if, I'm, if I'm off tomorrow, you know, right? Okay, yeah. it's, it's, I'm but sorry. you know what? But I'm you know sorry. what, Black, BlackRock, BlackRock Capital uh, market cap is so low right now, and just Ethereum is is higher than the BlackRock uh, market cap. Yeah, but they, so, they don't care. They have no, no, they, I, I can tell you that they care. But 
the point is just, yes, I was saying that government controls because they are the lawmaker at the forefront of what we see. But you're right that they, they are not the ultimate controller. They, have, they are controlled by the corporation and, and the lobby and, uh, and all the big, like the big, uh, big Google and big Apple and big pharma and all these big motherfucker. But, uh, but still those, those controller, the, the highest one, they need the governments. Like they, they, are, not, like they are not into ruling countries. They, they are into making money. So they need the entities of the government to be able to do what they want, but the government are needed. It's not like one control the other that much. They're just playing together because at the end, they all want power and money. So they are the, the two things that control the rest of the society. That's what I, I don't believe. know. I'm not, not so sure. Well, what do you think control then? It's money at its core. It's <clears> money <throat> that controls everything, but that's not an entity in itself. That's a problem. That's the first problem. Nobody knows what he's behind. But when you have family like the Walmart mm. family, which is basically the Walton and the, I don't remember yeah, what is the single name. Like they have like, they control like approximately like 10% or something like that of the, I don't remember but the number, but it they're tiny, matter. man. They're tiny. In the US, they are not. The full family, the full family, <laughs> the full family is not tiny. I can tell you that. It's scary. It's really scary when you think about it. It's super yeah. scary. That's so funny that we do a, an episode on that. Um, no, that's cool because, because I, I believe that people, people should, should read more about that. They should read more about yeah. that. Because, because when you. When you read so much about that, you suddenly start to notice why are you playing the game? And, and it's a good way to get out of this game. And you're like, st and I'm honest, like I have plenty of bullshit that I participate also, I know, but I'm like, why I'm not getting a share of that? I'm investing my money in, ET in ETFs, okay? ETFs don't go down. It's, it's almost impossible, like they don't go down. So come like BlackRock, no, do a lot. A good one. Yeah, but BlackRock control them with Aladdin, which is a supercomputer that deciding which company to invest based on tweet and everything. Uh, now BlackRock control Facebook, for example, because they bought so many shares of them that they control Facebook. And, and that's the thing. I participate in that because I want to make more money, obviously. Why yeah. will not participate in that? Why not me also? And this is why, like I said, that the knowledge is also important. It can be a curse, but it can be also important. And people should look into that. Well... I'm going to tell you exactly what I think about that. And it's really not something that people want to hear. Uh, I believe that that train is unstoppable. Which it's already, it's, it, it, it's already too far. Like you said, if you want to get knowledge, where are you going to get your information? 80% of what you will read is disinformation. It's going to be so hard for you to get the information. Second, how much information can just your brain get? Like oh, where you are. Oh, like don't, it, don't challenge me, okay? <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, no, but, like, oh. it's, so, it's so fucking hard to get just a little grasp of what's going on right now. And why I do believe that it's because it's a simple, simple thing. The exponential curve of technological advancement we are getting so in such a steep uh, hill right now. Everything is going so fast that our primitive brain are not able to catch up at all. Nobody, yeah, but nobody Elon can. Musk, Elon Musk is there to help us. <laughs> no, not at all. Yes, Neuralink. He's play, he's play. Oh yeah, okay, the Neuralink. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, you know what? That is needed. That is crazy what you want to do, but that is needed because now there is no way that your human brain can keep up with what's going on in the world. And if you want to be truly fucking amazed, and if you want to understand a bit more of the actual gap that there is between us and the, the advancement in technology, you have to read The Future is Faster Than You Think, the Stephen Cutler. Okay. Yeah, or you read uh, Rise of Robots, which is an old book, but still yeah, from when I, it was written, it's really amazing. Yeah, but, but it's because you haven't read this one. I really, it, it goes so uh, in deep on every change in society, in every technological advancement that are happening now at the highest level. 
-hmm. These guys are, are so uh, plugged with, they're really like up to date with, with the latest technology, the, the, the thing that are really, really ramping up right now, the convergence of all the big uh, industries that are disrupting everything. And when you read that, and you, you make the, the connections between all the dots, you're like, we're, we're so fucked as, yeah. a, as, a, as a human being. We're so but fucked like, but, but until what, we're cyborgs. Talking, but this is why I'm talking about Rise of Robots. Because in Rise yeah. of Robots, it takes the example, for example, you put people in a room, they listen to a symphony, and they're asked after, what did you feel? And people were like, oh, I was emotional, I feel sad, blah, blah, blah. What if I tell you that it was written by a computer? And they're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> you're like, what? Totally. Totally. What? So this is what I'm talking what? about. Because Rise of Robots was a, bit, was a bit before. It was like 2015, 2016. But this book is amazing because it takes so many examples about what the capability of machine is right now. Now, I know that I need to read the one from, um, from Stephen Kotler. And, it, it's, it's, and we don't know. We don't even know. It will interest why, you so much. I and, this is why, and this is why I'm talking again about bullshit. Because, for example, why are we teaching people right now accounting? Yeah. Why are we teaching people right <laughs> now lawyer, to be lawyers? Why are yeah, we teaching man. people? Like, people believe, people believe that, that, the, that the, you know, it's, it's almost like the, the old industrial revolution or the first robots arrived in, in the 60s and 70s. People believe that the robots are going to replace like construction worker and all that. Like, no, it's not the people that are going to get replaced. In the last financial crisis that happened, for example, <clears throat> they're replaced by agents. Agents are basically this, this computer, uh, you know, um, autonomous um, that was capable to make decisions and buy and trade, trade money like super fast. They had like to, they had like to put a, a limit on how much you can trade, but it's something like a million per second or something like that. You can do a million trading per second. So when there was a financial crisis, they fired the traders and they're like, we're going to replace with our robots because anyway, they do better decision than you because it's based on data. You're based on nothing. And, and, and so yeah. this is why it's so funny because right now there is plenty of things like that and people don't know that. My sister asked me for the kid and I'm like, okay, he has to be like mechanic mechanical engineer or botanist something for mars basically <laughs> <laughs> we arrive in mars you yeah. have to terraform the planet something that is useful there mm -hmm. you you touch oh man you touch a point that's so true and so interesting the jobs of the future it's like you're so you're so you're so right the lawyer forget about the lawyer Everything's like, there's already, like, if you just do a simple research, you will find that there are now services online that are disrupting the, the legal industry. You can, you can just write your problem and then some AI respond to you with a total legal text document giving you everything that you need. The lawyers, like they're gone, they're gone. It, it, it would be so fast. Uh, and, you're, and, and so many other profession, profession, just like the real estate uh, brokers, that industry is gonna be disrupted. In, so f in the book, you will see so many industries that's gonna, that just gonna be totally replaced, totally What's replaced up? by algorithm. Watson from IBM. What? Oh, wow. Yeah. Watson from it's, it's there. It's there since many years for people that don't know Watson is a supercomputer that help doctors to make decisions. And, and we, we're, we're like, we're juggling with two things here. It's like the bullshit that for some reason they, they are giving people to, to hold, to hold on to the old industries, to hold on to the old position and everything and to keep the system like it is, they have to put so much bullshit into you. And on the other side is the total ignorance of the masses and of the people because they lack the education and because they have been miseducated uh, to yeah. just believe, believe that, they, that how they should live in that kind of world. But I'm, I'm, gonna, tell, I'm gonna tell everyone that listen that one thing. The only fucking thing you should focus right now is how 
open you are to change because it's gonna change so rapidly that if you're I not thought, open, I thought, I thought you will be. I thought you will. Uh, you will. You were about to do a Game of Thrones thing. I don't know what's <laughs> change. I, I change is coming. Ch change is coming. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, change change happen every time. Every, every second, change is happening. But the rate at which it's happening is just exponential right now. And if you're if you're like like let's say it, when you were like the, your grandparents. There was some change. Yeah, the, the, the car came, the, the telephone. Electricity. The electricity. Yeah. These were major fucking changes. But they've seen a couple in their lifetime. And yeah, they could like hold on to it. And maybe they like hold on to the old ways. And maybe they suffered from it. Maybe not. But now we're not talking about a lifetime. We're talking about the next 10 years. Okay, everybody that lives in the next 10 years are going to have 10 lifetime of your grandparent in terms of advancement in technology, of disruption, of everything you think is like, everything you think is working like it is right now, it's going to change. I, I, I saw a really, 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 really interesting TED talk with, it's a conversation with the curator, um, the guy from TED Talk, what's his name? And Anderson? No, whatever. The the guy that do the TED Talk, that that created it. Sometimes he do. Uh, sometimes it's speakers that that come to talk, but sometimes he he do conversation with some important people, and it's like an hour. Yeah. And that guy was a futuristic, super renowned in, in the tech industry and everything, and he was a futuristic. And he went on the show and he said, he said. Uh, Chris Anderson, that's the name of the guy. He, he asked him, how, like, what do you think will be, um, how did he ask that? It's like, what do you think will be the future? And the guy in CERN, he says, in a hundred years from now. Yeah. On, like, I'm just trying to remember exactly what he said. He says, what you know right now about anything in the world, what you know right now, only 1% will remain in a hundred years. Only one, so sorry, I didn't the get nine, it. It's really hard to, to, to wrap your head around it. It's like, you don't know 99% of what's coming in the next hundred years because everything will change. Everything, absolutely everything. So. What you know now about the foundation of society, about the technological advancement, about like the, the probably the, the one person that remains is who we are as human and what, how we interact with each other. And even there, when we become cyborgs and when like it's, it's all going to change. So if you're not like 100 years, not that much, the generation that are that are 20 right now, they they're 20. OK, there's a big chance that they're going to live from 80 uh, to maybe 150 who knows it's simple it's because simple. in that time it's simple it's simple with these people they don't know how to use a map what do you mean they don't know they don't know how to use a map people that are 20 don't Ooh. know how to use a map they have google map why do we need to use a map <laughs> okay that's okay no but like it's it sounds <laughs> it sounds super simple as change it sounds super simple as change but we are the people that still had a map and so our parents getting lost and taking out the map. There are some people mm -hmm. today that don't know how to use a map. And what is funny, and this is what I talk about bullshit, is in school, we are still teaching you what is a map. There you go. So that's We're the still... rate. The rate of change in the institution is so low, and, but the rate of change in society is crazy fucking high. So yeah. why do you keep teaching that? It's totally... Yeah, it's totally useless. Why would you not try to make individual the 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 most creative possible, the 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 op the the, op the more open possible? Because that's just what you need for the future. You need there's, there's, to look at these things <clears throat> and and yeah. say, I cannot take anything from granted. 
Yeah, that's the thing like you need to change. I don't know why, for example, there is discussion right now and I don't want to take too long because we said we were, we were keeping that short, yeah. but <laughs> you know, there is this discussion about the universal salary, universal pay. Base income. Basic, basic income, basic income, sorry. I, I took the French or European word. So no, basically, but you get paid. Universal ba basic income. Okay, okay, that's, that's, uh, that's uh, so it's, um, it's basically that you get money whatever you're doing, you get a certain amount that you, that everybody gets. And I, I still laugh at people are like, yeah, but we, why like people should work and blah, blah, blah and everything. And I'm like, and I, do you get it? Like right now, like, okay, I'm gonna give an example. There is mining field in Australia that are completely automated. The trucks, the, 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 the digging, the, the, everything is automated. So every, the thing is running 24, 24 seven. Don't need guys. So that's, that's, uh, that's the full bullshit of that. So I don't know if you want to finish it because we, we finish against, uh, man. Yeah. It's, it's hard for me to finish a discussion. No, no, I think, I think, okay. Because... I know, I know, I know I want to finish. I think it's a bit related to what you said. People should be aware about the change that are coming. It's really hard on how to be aware of that. I don't know what to recommend on that, but the thing is that just be, just think that what it's going to be tomorrow. It's not going, it's not what it was yesterday. It's not what it's going to be today. And, I can't explain what is going to be tomorrow because I have no clue. I have no clue what it's going to change. I have no clue. I'm honest. Even me, like I don't think I'm prepared for that. But the thing is, it's coming. So yeah. I will say that and, again. Uh, and I coming. also know. I, I also know how I, I want to end that is. When, when you, you take these conversation and these things and for someone that's outside and he looks at that and he just thinks for a second, okay, yeah, let's, let's pretend that these guys are right. Like that everything is gonna fucking, not, not necessarily blow up, but just change and transform so much. It can be really scary, really, really fucking scary. Okay. And I totally, totally understand that. I have my moments where I'm just like, Wow, like I'm totally scared about it. But in every crisis, there are opportunity and the, the bigger the crisis, the bigger the opportunity and one super important and big, big, big opportunity there is right now is that if you do, if you do what Phil just said to focus on opening up to change, focus on, on, on removing your, your certainties, to just say, not take anything for granted. Just, just coming back to, to, to the present moment. That's the opportunity. In the past 10 years, all that hype about meditation and yoga and everyone is like, oh, you should live in the present moment. You should live in the present moment. That's what you're, you're striving to do. Well, I can assure you that what's coming is forcing you to go there and you should embrace that because what is going to make yeah. you... If you, if you welcome it, it's going to make you such a better person and such a better human because you're going to just look at what's happening today. What's mm -hmm. up today with your life? How are you happy today? Because the uncertainty about tomorrow is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So if you just come back to that sim single day and you just, you just think, okay, how do I make my life better today? How do I make my family's life better today? And it just, in a, in a crazy way, it makes you come back to the, 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 the essence. Like that, that, that amount of information and of craziness that you cannot understand, if you just look at it like you look at a big mountain, it will scare you. But if you just take that energy and just come back to that day and say, look, I'm going to accept everything that's happening because that's so so yeah. way above what I can control, then what can I control right, right now is my own point of view on all of that, my own point of view on life. When, what do I feel now? And then this is a tremendous opportunity to, to better your inside life and just and detach from the outside world and just looking at, at that and, and thinking why the world's going there. Like what's, what can I see positive in all that disruption that is coming and and to not be scared i mean 
it will be scary, but just face it straight on and, and it will, it will just erase quite, quite fast. That's and, and, to that's, be, and to be really practical, if you're over 45 or 50, I think you're going to be all right. If you're uh, under 40, if you're under 20, like you should be like prepared for that. And on the more practical <laughs> guy, okay, if you have kids, you don't know what they should do, put them in something that is useful for Mars. Saying again, they're going to become astronauts. Okay. Mechanics, exactly. engineer, botanist. That's all of that is useful. Teaching, teaching, super useful teaching. Teaching is super useful. So that's, that was my, uh, that was my, uh, Two minutes of advice for your kids. Uh, yeah. I don't have kids. That's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not like because it. you don't have kids that you cannot you can't give great advice. Because sometimes parents are too much into their 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 life of having kids, and they they don't take time to just come back and either to themselves or just come back and say, okay, what's best for my kids, and not just what's best for me to keep a sane head while raising them. And uh, I have a quote just before you finish. It's not a quote. It's, I mean, it's a quote from one of my teachers that said that we were, I think we were 19, we were at university and they were like, by the way, change is, you know, really coming in IT. So, you know, just think like that. Okay. In our world today, there is a really low chance that you, it's like your wife. There is a really low chance that you will finish with the same one that you started. He was talking about our jobs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if you just face that fact, you're going to love your wife even more today and, exactly. uh, <laughs> and love your life even more today. That's, that's what you should do. All right. So let's wrap it up. Uh, and uh, always remember to be yourself and to have fun, even in the midst of chaos. That's really important. Thanks for this one. It's a surprise. <laughs> but thanks for this one. So see you next week, my friend. And uh, thank you, everyone, for listening. And uh, we love you, heroes. See you next week. <laughs>